I'm Demi Stevens, founder and CEO of You're the Book Press and editor-in-chief of Self Pub Magazine. We're here with artist and author Richard Chandler Hoff today to get a little bit of a person behind the author series going here. So I'm going to dig a little bit. Uh, when did you first become interested in being an artist? Oh, when I was back in probably elementary school and making a mess uh, in, uh, <laughs> in uh, school slapping paint around. I was thought, this hey, like this is fun. Finger paint or the jars? Yeah, the jars. Not so much finger paint, but the jars. But uh, I was the sloppiest painter in the class, but I was having a ball. Do they have any of those pictures of you with like the white t-shirt that's paint splattered? Well, we had, little, we had little precious smocks back then and <laughs> easels, and we each got to wear a smock when we were uh, throwing paint. Uh -huh. So that was modern art back in the it was <laughs> back in the fifties. <laughs> you had to be dressed appropriately. What was your first uh, paying gig as an artist? Oh my goodness, that's interesting. Um, well, shortly after art school, I went, had to go out and get a job. Um, I guess I started off teaching um, secondary school. Um, really, junior I didn't high know school. That. I taught for one year and um, hated it. <laughs> um, I thought I liked teaching, and I thought teaching was a noble profession, but in the public schools it's not always noble. Well, maybe noble, it's just not, <laughs> it ain't easy. Right. There's a special place for our teachers, reserved in heaven. Mm -hmm. um, then, uh, what was uh, a job that you may have taken after that, that you got to use your artwork for? Well, I've always been fortunate. Whenever I, I worked at it, it required um, an artistic expression or a sense of design. I worked uh, in a department store doing um, window displays, which was uh, very challenging, especially in the summertime when the weather or the temperature in the large plate glass windows went up to 120 degrees. Did you ever have to fight like the direct sunlight and get fade out of the items in the oh, windows? Oh, yes, yeah. Um, the, the clothing always faded, and uh, oh, that's hard. And those mannequins would fight you when you try to take your clothes off. <laughs> Just like every woman in our lives, right? <laughs> no, please, no. <laughs> then I had heard a rumor that you got a, a very, uh, you know, a job that all artists dream about: well, working for a company down in Florida. Well, actually, I was working the company I, when I worked for them. This was um, Walt Disney. <laughs> it was in California. Uh, I never really had to go out there. I was pretty much uh, based out of my home, but uh, they had uh, an office in Burbank at the time, which is where their uh, facilities were for their moving picture division. And so I worked on the, uh, the science fiction movie, The Black Hole, wow. um, doing uh, publicity work for that. And then I later did other tasks for them uh, in conceptualization and illustration. Conceptualization is, I don't know, is that a gratifying job? Because you're putting out a lot of ideas, right? It, it can be gratifying. Uh, you really have to very, have a very solid, uh, grounded uh, ego because by the time your concept goes to production and is actually in production and the movie is made, uh, there's very little that you can uh, identify with that you did because everything's modified. It's, it's kind of like designing by committee. I think, though, that there's some elements of that that are a little bit like the writer's first draft. Because until you have that presented that conceptualization, nobody else knows where to take it from there. So I think that's... That's a noble art in and of itself. Mm, mm. <laughs> so you already had many pieces ready and finished when you thought about putting uh, your book together. What was that process like with the writing and the just tying it all into a finished product? It was kind of like backing into the book because having the artwork uh, was no problem. The artwork was in existence. It, was, it had been completed. It had been photographed, part of my my archives. Um, the difficult part was generating the, the text to go with it. And the hardest 
writing is when I think you write about yourself. Um, sure. Having some sort of a, a clear view of, of who you are is very difficult because, you know, we think we're one person in the world or one personality and everyone sees us differently. Um, I did have a lot of good things going for me. I had graphic design experience and the software to produce the graphic design uh, for the book. And because of that, I was able to have the book printed locally. And that enabled me to go over for press checks, actually to, mm -hmm. to where it was being printed, to talk face to face with the personnel, which is always good because you try to establish a rapport so that they understand uh, not only your goal, which is a complete and beautiful book, but your standards for producing that, that project. I think you also, like when we built our house, we, I brought over brownies and cookies for the work crew. I think there's something nice about getting to know the people who are going to be assembling your book. Because yes. you create a better product in the end. Yeah, you do create a better product. You, you give them the impetus to go the extra mile uh, and instead of being satisfied with the norm, they, they will turn out a superb product mm -hmm. for you. What program did you use to lay out your book? InDesign, it's an Adobe program, um, InDesign, but then uh, also um, Illustrator, mm -hmm. and of course um, Photoshop was important for sizing. And Were there any design elements when you originally conceptualized the book that had to change before you packaged it for print? Absolutely, it was a, a real learning experience. I, I wanted to have the ability to reorder small amounts of books and the viable method of production was computer printing. And I found out early on, after I had laid out the original book completely, that we needed a nine by nine inch book. Um, because you, were, you were landscape oriented originally, right? I Wider think, than it was I tall. Think I, I think I was. Yeah. It was supposed to, it was going to be this immense coffee table book. And it turned out to be a lot different. But because of the presses, um, the, or I should say because of the computer and the paper, we had to uh, go within a certain size. So nine inches by nine inches was the optimal, or the optimal size for, for what I wanted to do. Um, that required me to completely relay out the whole book. Uh, yeah, because you have column usage and balance and different illustrations going on. It's a very graphically oriented book, so just changing the page dimensions. Yes, it wasn't very simple. Um, I had to rely a lot more on double page spreads so that as the book became smaller, it the pages increased. Yeah, it's a very artistic layout. One of the few places where I've seen uh, left and right margin page numbers really work, but it's perfect for this catalog, really keeps the attention on the images. Well, I was also conscious, too, of the of a good balance between positive and negative space. A lot of people are afraid that it's like if you're talking to someone and there's a long pause in the conversation, some people feel very uncomfortable with that pause and, and rush to fill it in. And other people are afraid that somebody else is going to steal the thunder away from them and they'll never get it back, so they just have to keep talking. <laughs> So when you're, when you're publishing your own book, don't be afraid to have some, some empty space because it, it allows the, the book to visually breathe. And I think people feel comfortable with that. Um, the reader feels comfortable. It feels airy and it's easy to, to read. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a textbook that you have to work your way through line by line. Correct. I think that's great advice. Do you have any ideas or suggestion maybe you'd make to some artists who are out there watching us today about maybe putting their um, artwork into a book format? I would highly recommend it if you had all been considering it. Uh, it's been great for my career. Uh, I use it almost as a, an extensive uh, uh, business card when I send out uh, proposals to universities and to galleries for uh, solo exhibitions. I enclose a book because it's there's so much about me in that book that doesn't appear in a dry resume, although the resume goes with it, 
But a resume is just a list of chronological events that have taken place. It's very cut and dry, whereas the book not only shows the quality of the work that I produce, it tells a lot about my inner feelings in producing it and about the, um, the, the behind the scenes, so to speak, uh, what goes into certain drawings, why I chose to do them. And at the back of the book, it has a, um, a kind of a, a extensive uh, resume, um, and that helps too. Uh, and it just it it provides instant credibility to the person who sees it. I would tend to agree. That's great advice. Thank you so much for joining us today. And all right, all you authors out there, you've got your charge to move forward with your next book.